you are a diehard Bills fan. From where are you from originally? Where this, you? Uh, born on Long Island, Mitchell Field Air Force Base. But okay. At two months old, my mother said to my father, "We are moving back to my hometown of Buffalo." Okay. So I, it's it's all Buffalo. It's all Buffalo. I learned how to drive in the parking lot of the stadium when they were building it. Come on now. No, that's where the where the where the driving instructors, you know, for all the kids take your driver's ed. Yeah. Went right to the parking lot. That's when they were building the stadium. We were watching the two sides go up, and that's where I learned how to drive. So it's it's. It's kind of like, in a way, maybe learning how to drive in an obstacle course, because I imagine, did somebody try to body slam through a table while you were driving around there? Is that, did, did that, I, think that, that, I think that developed over time. Oh, so not, not while you were learning how no, to no, drive. No, no, no. Okay. You have enough beef on wicks and a, and a, and a few labats, and you're on tables. What can I tell you? Have you done the parking lot? Absolutely. Yes, I have. Okay. I went to, I, I still tell this story, uh, early 90s when the bills were actually pretty good. Yes. And, um, yes, they were. They, uh, uh, I went to a playoff game. I, I think it was the Jets. Mm -hmm. um, I know it was freezing outside. And I remember from where I parked in the parking lot to get in, I passed two pigs on spits. Mm -hmm. And we're talking January, where it's like sub-zero. Two. Right. Just in the way that I walked. Um, it's, it's incredibly festive. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> that is one way to describe the Buffalo Bills parking <laughs> parking lot scene before a game. Uh, we we've been there uh, on occasion for the NFL Network over the last 15, 16 years, and the 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 fan base is beyond over the moon uh, about their team. And this year in particular, it just feels like Josh Allen's the right guy. Do you feel that way, or have you gone there yet? Or I, you... I I absolutely feel that way. And and with that said, mm -hmm. you know, there's still a learning curve. You know, I, I I feel like the Bills have yet this year to have four unbelievable quarters. But they're winning games having two and a half. Right. You know, but, but I'm looking forward to that game when it's four quarters. And a lot of it, you know, is is a learning curve. And, you know, I mean, you look at Josh's stats. I think he's... You know, he has the best, you know, completion percentage, I think, in the NFL in the fourth quarter. But we got to get to the fourth quarter and be in the game. And and he's had a few come from behinds already this year in the fourth quarter. So I, I am a believer. But the thing that I'm waiting for, yes. I said this to my son this morning, just this morning. You know what I really want? I, I want that 350-yard game for Josh because it hasn't come yet. And well, when he, it happens, I think it'll I think it'll just like free him. Right. He he did finally break that stretch, right? That where they're non three hundred yard games. He did have one where and Kelly was in the building and, and Jim loves him too. You know, like he feels like he's he's he I don't want to I don't want to I'll just go there. It doesn't seem like there's a Trent Edwards here situation, right? Like you're not having a false belief that this kid actually is the real deal. You no. know. Well, so. you know what? If, if he's not doing it in the air mm -hmm. and he sees an opening, he's, I mean, that's the one thing that nobody talked about with Josh when he was coming there. If he takes off. Nobody did. You're right. And the truth about it is when he takes off, I remember a couple of plays last year, and I'm sure the coaching staff, every time he takes off, are like, oh, please don't, right. please don't run. Right. But I've seen linebackers go after him and they don't catch him. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he can motor and he's a big guy. But this year you'll notice that he'll slide. Well, at least uh, William Fickner here on the uh, on the Rich Eisen show. At least uh, you know Brady wasn't in the league yet when you worked with Affleck uh, on Armageddon, right? I mean, because no, nope, no. Nope. But he was he talking about New England at the time, or is your Buffalo guy? Or listen, people in New England talk about New England a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I, the, the true story was yes. 1998, and I'm working on this film. Might have been 2000, 2000. Okay, right. Working on this film called What's the Worst That Could Happen? Okay. And I was shooting in Boston with yes. Danny DeVito and all the all the Teamsters guys are around and, and, yeah. and great guys and we talk everyday sports and they just couldn't stop talking about the Yankees. This is before Boston went on a, a sweet little run in the 2000s. Yes. Couldn't stop talking about it. Sports radio, can't stop talking about the Yankees. Mm -hmm. One day I looked at all these guys and I said, I hate to tell you this, but they're not really talking about you guys in New York. <laughs> they're not. It's really, yes. it's really a you thing. Yeah. Um, you know, 27 um, right. or whatever it was at the time. But uh, 
Boston, Boston's a great sports town. I know it's, it's it is. Bottom line, and bottom it, line. You know, there's been and they they've been spiking the football and uh, more than just other uh, sports. You know, he's a, a Boston guy over there. Yeah, I'm not looking over there. Did you did you marry? <laughs> did I hear you married into a, a, a I, Boston sports family? I, you could say it that way. I, I did, did marry into that. I did. I married into yeah, a Boston she, sports did, family. She's too. from Worcester, and uh, and it's it's all Patriots. So so on the weekends, you know, there's there's. Two nice TVs in the house, and one's <laughs> nicer than the other. So I look at my 17-year-old son, and I'm like, hey, let's have a Democratic vote. It's like, Kimmy, you're going downstairs. <laughs> the two of us just voted for that. She goes, you want dinner tonight? I'm going upstairs. <laughs> <laughs> William Fickner here on the Rich Eisen Show. Well, you know, um, that's amazing that you're, you're a diehard Buffalo Bill. So who's your guy growing up? Who's your Bill fan growing up? Who's your Player-wise? Yeah, who's I, your guy? I love Steve Tasker. I just, I just, you know, I mean, I loved everything about that team and Bruce Smith. And, and when I was really younger, you know, I mean, you know, that was back in Jack Kemp days sure. when, when Daryl and Monica was the backup at, at the old rock pile. Rock pile, yeah. And um, I remember going to games there with my dad. And, and uh, but, you know, as it developed, I liked Joe Ferguson, Joe Cribs over the years. Nice. But ta- there was something about Tasker that, you know, arguably maybe the smallest guy in the field. And every time on those special teams, half half those kickoffs, you know, he'd get the tackle. He was amazing. He'd just fly through people, over people. I just thought, wow, I just want to do things in life like Steve Tasker plays football. You know, a lot of people are, have mentioned that he, if if they do finally put just a pure special teams player, not a punter, not a kicker, but the guy who just tackles yeah. or returns, that he'd be a Hall of Famer. Yeah, Steve Tasker. No, no doubt about it. No doubt about it. He was unbelievable. For more of the Rich Eisen Show, tune to Audience Channel 239 on DirecTV for free on BR Live or download the Rich Eisen Show app.